Hey everybody, I'm Andy Smith, your hostess with the mostess. I'm a 30 year comic book veteran, having worked for Marvel Comics, DC Comics, Image Comics, Cross Generation, Ominous Press, you name it, I've probably worked for them. And I do other things art wise outside of comics in the field of advertising. I've also written some books on drawing comics you might have seen, uh, drawing American manga superheroes, Drawing Dynamic Comics was my first book. And I also did the handy little How to Draw Superhero sketchbook where all you need is a pencil because you do all the work right inside the book. Enough about that. This is the Book Look series. The Book Look series is where I grab a book off my library. You can see the tons of books I have behind me. And I go through it page by page with you so you can see if it's a book that you might want to buy. I like to know what I want to buy before I buy it, and I feel this is a way to give you some insight into these books. So join me for today's book look. Thanks. Well, hello, everybody. I'm your host with the most, Andy Smith, 31-year veteran of the comic book industry, working on everything and everything and everything. Well, maybe not everything, but I have worked for Marvel, DC, Image, CrossGen, Acclaim, Valiant, same company, I guess, and many more, and things outside of comics. If you want to see, check out my website, link in the description below, as well as First Man, Volume 2, coming at you, a superhero book for a new generation, and that new generation is you, young, old, you will love First Man, fun superhero adventure, you can get the book now, link in the description below. Also, you'll see a link, the first one, for Cordrath. Cordrath is my new book I'm doing with my buddy Dennis. If you like He-Man, if you like Dungeons and Dragons, if you like fantasy epic adventure, you'll like this book. Go sign up now. Everybody that signs up will get a limited edition trading card of Lilaneth who is the Necronite's second-in-command. She's vivacious and beautiful, and you can only get the trading card by signing up and backing the campaign when it goes live. Now, on to the book look, The Marvel Art of Asad Ribic. Uh, hopefully I pronounced that right. I first saw Asad's work when he was doing covers, when he first started at Marvel, what, 15, 16 years ago, if not more. And I, I really enjoy painted covers, more than digitally painted just because there's just something about applying the paint to the to the board illustration board canvas whatever his work looks like he uses watercolor and gouache but he's done some interior work as well this book is a spotlight of some of his work um so let's go through it these books aren't that much i actually picked this up it's a real quick brand new 20 bucks I picked it up at a convention for $4, $4, that's right. But these books do a pretty good job of going through um, somebody's art. Look at this, this scene, they use this scene almost exactly in Thor Love and Thunder. Hopefully he got paid some for it, but we don't know. Oh, so here we go. Uh, cover 2003, this is one of his first works for uh, for Marvel right here. So all the way back to 2003. And then we show some more of his early covers for Wolverine stuff. I really like his color sense. I love how things just fade like that into the darkness. Just real nice design sense and such. I admire people that do paintings like this because it's just not something I do. Um, this Kingpin cover here, I really like the darks and the lights right on top and how the darks just fade kind of into the background. All the focus is pushed up into here. You really get a nice sense of motion with what he's doing there. Uh, you know, it's funny, in his painted work, the way he does anatomy, which is definitely more realistic. He definitely comes from a realism school when it comes to anatomy and such. 
I like it in the painted stuff. As we move on, you'll see some of his interior work. And sometimes it hits for me. And I mean, sometimes it misses. And it's not because he's not a talented artist. I mean, you can look at this and see that he's very talented. He knows how to paint. He's a good storyteller. Um, and he definitely knows how to draw. But, you know, I guess I always go back to, I grew up with guys like Gil Kane, John Buscema, Neil Adams, George Perez, um, John Byrne, you know, guys like that, that were more stylized and kind of was like, oh, this is anatomy? Sweet, now I'm going to interpret it the way I want. Whereas stuff like this looks like he's, you know, photo referencing stuff. Once again, nothing wrong with photo referencing but it just takes out some of the dynamics, I feel. This is some of his storytelling stuff from Loki, a miniseries that he did. This Thor is very nice. Nice dramatic pose. But the proportions are so dead on realistic. I just would like to see it pushed a little bit more. Server Surfer Requiem, I believe he painted the whole thing, which is cool. Nice chrome effect. I say he's a fantastic painter. I would love to watch him do a painting from start to finish. I always admire guys that paint, and just, Alex Ross obviously is, a, is just so great at this. But just getting these nice, crisp, straight lines on the buildings and such. So small things that I notice. Here's some cover sketches. I think this is the final for a cover. Pretty ballsy. A back shot of the surfer streaking away from us. Then he did Submariner, the Depths. To the depths of space. Another uh, painted series he did. With another one of my favorite characters. That was drawn iconically by uh, John Buscema. Just like the Silver Surfer was. Love the atmosphere he gets right here. These waves, the water, just... So very nice. Uh, I did not win the billion dollar lottery. If I did, I would have been able to afford one of his paintings. I'll tell you one thing I don't like about, you know, this double page spread in a comic book probably worked great because you can lay a comic flat, but you can't lay a square bound book flat. So you lose all this. Would have been better just to print it this way with a caption above it or something or this way. Uncanny X-Force. Very cool. I'd like to see him paint because it really looks like, say, I think he's using gouache. He might start with watercolor. I, I mean, it could be acrylic, but I think it's gouache. I'm not sure though, but it looks like gouache to me. It does not look like acrylic. Here we have stuff that he did the interior art on, but did not do the colors. So it's cool to see his uh, pencils and inks. And I use inks, you know, air quote inks, because when you see some of his work in here, not colored, it just looks like it's pencil darken up some. I could be wrong. Now, Ultimate Comics, Ultimates, I actually bought this trade paperback. Uh, I thought it was a pretty good story. I do like the Ultimates line of characters. Um, I love simple design like this. You know. I mean, look, when you're really high tech, you don't need tons of bells and whistles on things. 
One of my favorite parts of his work is his design. These helicarriers look cool. Now, I did look through this panel, and I believe he drew the helicarrier once and then just uh, copied it in different areas to give the depth and stuff. That's how it looks. I could be wrong, but I was really trying to look at the details of these two and where certain things lined up. And even back here. And it all looks like it lines up pretty much the same. Nothing wrong with that. But see, this is what I, I mean. Like, I mean, that's cool looking. But it's so, like, based on realism. I think John Buscema, obviously Jack Kirby. You just would have felt this more. Like, I don't feel this. This Hulk is really cool, but it just looks like a pretty much a, a really jack bodybuilder. Like if you made his head larger, you'd just be like, oh, that's just a, a real person. And I do go back and forth on my, my thoughts and feelings on this stuff because I'm a big Alex Ross fan too on Alex Ross's work, as we know is uh, rather realistic as well. So just looking at his work, I do wonder if he uses models for, um, for his work. And this is cool. Thor, God of Thunder. He did this series. Like I said, I love his paintings so much. The reason I think this is gouache is because I look at like the highlights here. And they're definitely painted on, he's definitely painting dark to light and he's getting more opaque with the highlights and such. I love how like this hand fades down here. He said, I would really enjoy watching him paint. I mean, this stuff is cool. Um, it's, I don't know, it's just a little too... Uh, Two in the nose, realistic for me. Cover sketch, nice power to it. See, I love seeing stuff like this. These are his uh, sketches for uh, the God Butcher, Gore the God Butcher. And I love seeing character design sketches like this. To me, these are super cool. Now see, here's an issue I have with this. And this is drawn really nicely. But let's be honest, if you were doing sample pages and you turned in something like this for a sample page, the editor, if he was, you know, if he was being honest, would say, that's nice at all, but where's the background? I don't know where they're at. Where are they? I mean, this big panel here could have had some background in it to help settle the scene. Just saying. Cover sketch, finish cover, that's cool to see. Character sketch of Thor. Some head studies, very nice. Once again, I can just I can just look at his paintings forever and just try to dissect them and see, you know, kind of deconstruct it to see if I can figure out how he does it. His painting process. Now, see, this is really cool. This really looks like he's struggling to pick up that hammer. This is the first time I've seen this because I didn't buy this series when it came out. That is freaking cool. I love it. You look at this first panel here, and this hand just leads you right down to here. Just really nice. Nice painting of uh, Thor there. Jane, Jane Thor. And he did Secret Wars, which I totally forgot that he did Secret Wars. So uh, I might get this trade paperback just to, uh, I mean, I'd read it, but just to look at his artwork in it. I know he did, uh, somebody else did the coloring on the inside of it. So he just did uh, pencils and inks to it. I wish these were bigger. 
these are his quote unquote pencils and inks. And I say that because you can see the pencil filled in. Maybe he's inking the outline or it could just be pencils that were manipulated in Photoshop to darken up and, and whatnot. Here's a good example. So these are his, you know, they credit him here, pencils and inks. But I mean, these are just, just look at this. It looks like it's total pencil. There's no ink on this at all. And in fact, you can see this was so tight. He blew it up here, squinted his eyes some more, and then took this and blew it up to here, which works. It's a nice zoom in. There's nothing wrong with doing that. I mean, another way to do it is basically blow that up and trace it off. So, I love his lighting back here. This is pretty cool to see the pencils to the colors. Uh, this you'll remember from the inside front cover. And I got to admit, just in black and white like this, it just doesn't really work for me that much. You know, and I mean, the Spider-Man drawing is nice. Um, this is why I think he might use photo reference is because that is pretty much right on with what somebody would look like in a costume like that. Then you see it in color. You tilt that so you guys can see it. And I'm assuming the colorist is Ives Sorvincina. Probably messed that up, but great color job. I mean, what a difference from the black and white. And this is a color cover gallery of some of his uh, better colors. I remember House of M when he was doing these covers. Some Black Panther stuff. So overall, you know, if you're a fan of, of uh, Assad's artwork, I would recommend getting this book. And you can probably find it cheap. Like I said, I was at a convention and a guy that sells, all he does is sell trade paperbacks. Really marked down, had this for four bucks. So I was like, four bucks? You know I'm getting that for four dollars. This is a favorite of mine too, this painting right here, just because of the way he handled the backgrounds. Really pushed back, great sense of depth. I really like that Hulk figure and the Iron Man figure. And I have seen some of his paintings in person at conventions before at uh, art dealers tables. So I do know what they look like and it's cool to see the paint uh, in real life on the painting to see how he builds it up. And stuff. I am Groot. And that's about it. Let's see. A couple more right here. And we end with uh with Iron Man. Viking S type Iron Man. And of course Doctor Doom. So this was Asad Ribic, the Marvel or the art Marvel, the art of Assad Ribic. Uh, if you like it, go check it out. And of course, if you love good funny books, good stories, get yourself a little First Man Volume 2, 64 page, square bound. Get Volume 1, get Volume 2, both available now. Link in the description below. Thank you guys for joining me. Check out my website, link in the description below. And it's andysmithart.com. Hit the like button. More importantly, hit that subscribe button. Smash it, smash it, if you will. Subscribe to the channel for more book looks like this. I go live every now and then. And until next time, bye-bye, everybody.